I have been studying how I may compare this prison where I live unto the world. And for because the world is populous, and here is not a creature but myself, I cannot do it. Yet I'll hammer it out. My brain, I'll prove the female to my soul, my soul the father. And these two beget a generation of still breeding thoughts. And these same thoughts people this little world. And you must like the people of this world, for no thought is contented. The better sort and thoughts of things divine are in the mixed with scruples and do set the word itself against the word. And thus, come, little ones. And then again, it is as hard to come as for a camel to thread the postern of a small needle's eye. Thoughts tending to ambition, they do plot unlikely wonders. How these vain weak nails may tear a passage through the flinty ribs of this hard world, my ragged prison walls, and for they cannot die in their own pride. Thoughts tending to content flatter themselves that they are not the first of fortune's slaves, nor shall not be the last. Like silly beggars who, sitting in the stocks, refute their shame, that many have and others must sit there. And in this thought they find a kind of ease, bearing their own misfortunes on the back of such as have before endured the light. Thus play I, in one person, many people, and none contented, Sometimes am I king. Then treasons make me wish myself a beggar, and so I am. Then crushing penury persuades me I was better when a king. Then am I king again. And by and by think that I am unkinged by Bolingbroke, and straight am nothing. But whate'er I be, nor I, nor any man that but man is, if nothing shall be pleased, till he be eased with being nothing. Music do I hear? Hey, hey, keep time! How sour sweet music is! And time is broke and no proportion kept. So is it in the music of men's lives. And here have I the daintiness of ear to check time broke in a disordered string. But for the concord of my state and time, had not an ear to hear my true time broke. I wasted time. And now does time waste me, for now has time made me his numbering clock. My thoughts are minutes, and the sighs they jar, their watches on, onto mine eyes, the outward watch. That to my finger like a dice point is pointing still, in cleansing them from tears. Now, sir, the sound that tells what hour it is, are clamorous groans which strike upon my heart, which is a bell. So sighs and tears and groans show minutes, times and hours. But my time runs posting on in Bolingbroke's proud joy, while I stand fooling here is Jack of the Clock. <sighs> this music mads me. Let it sound no more. For though it have all madmen to their wits, in me it seems it will make wise men mad. Yet blessing on this heart that gives it me, for tis a sign of love. And love to reach it is a strange brooch in this all-hating world. 
Hail, royal prince. Thanks, noble peer. The cheapest of us is ten gross to dear. What art thou? And how comest thou hither? Where no man never comes, but that sad dog that brings me food to make misfortune live. I was a poor groom of thy stable, king, when thou wert king, who, travelling towards York, with much ado, at length have got a leave to look upon my sometimes royal master's face. Oh, how it earned my heart when I beheld in London streets that coronation day when Bolingbroke rode on Roan Barbary, that horse that thou so often hast bestrit, that horse that I so carefully have dressed. Rode he on Barbary? Tell me, gentle friend, how went he under him so proudly as if he disdained the ground? So proud that Bolingbroke was on his back. That jade has eat bread from my royal hand. This hand has made him proud with clapping him. Would he not stumble? Would he not fall down? Since pride must have a fall. And break the neck of that proud man that did usurp his back. Forgive this horse. Why do I rail on thee? Since thou, created to be aught by man, wast born to bear. I was not made a horse. And yet I bear a burden like an ass, spurred, galled, and tired by Johnson Bolingbroke. Fellow, give place. Here is no longer a stay. If thou love me, tis time thou wert away. What my tongue dares not, that my heart shall say. Me lord, will it please you to fall to? Taste of it first, as thou art wont to do. Me lord, I dare not. Sir Piers of Exton, who lately came from the king, commands the contrary. The devil take Henry of Lancaster and thee! Help! 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 How oh, now? What means death in this rude assault? That hand shall burn in never quenching fire that stacketh thus my person. Axton, thy fierce hand has with the king's blood stained the king's own land. Mount, mount my soul, lie seated up on high, whilst my gross flesh sinks downward here. To die. Ah. As full of valor, as of royal blood, both have I spilled. Oh, would the deed were good? For now the devil that told me I did well says that this deed is chronicled in hell. The dead king to the living king I'll bear. <laughs>